We're continuing now with our discussion of Perak Vav, the sixth Perak of Malachim Bed. Pasuk Zion, the uh, Navi tells us, Vahabayit and the house, Bihi Banoto, as it was being built. So it tells us something very interesting. It tells us, Evan Shlema. It was built of a complete Shalem, a complete rock. So the, the word Shalem is an important one. We'll come back to it in a second. And Masa, which means it was carried, it was quarried rock. Nivna, it was built again, the Sharesh Bana. So the first thing it tells us is that when they built the Beit HaMikdash, it tells us something about the rocks themselves. And the rocks themselves had to be, as it says here, Shlema. Okay, hopefully no one misses the uh, irony that Shlomo is the same word as Shlema. But it means from the Sharesh of Shin Lamid Mem, even though here it's not a verb, so it really doesn't have that type of Sharesh, but Shalem. Uh, so that was complete, a complete rock. So you had to have complete rocks, complete stones. They had to be full stones, sort of very much like, you've seen the Kotal Maravi, very much like those, you know exactly what those gigantic quarried stones look like. And uh, that's number one. So it had to be Evan Shlema. Number two, it had to be uh, something else. Umakavot, it tells us, and hammers, vihagarzen, and chisels, and kol kli barzel, any type of barzel, any type of kli, which was a, a tool that was made out of barzel, that was made out of iron. Okay, so those also, anything out of barzel could not be used in the building of Shlomo Melech's Beit HaMikdash. So we have the barzel, we have the iron, and that could not be used in the Beit HaMikdash. And not only that, it says, Lo Nishma, it even wasn't heard. Lo Nishma, there was no such Lo Nishma. You can hear such a things, but buy it in the Beit HaMikdash, be Banato. So these two things, number one, that they had to be Shlema, it had to be a full stone, and barzel, and you couldn't use any barzel when they built the Beit HaMikdash. These are the two fascinating ideas within the this Pasuk. And the question is, is there a connection between them? And what's the source of all of this? Where did Shlomo Mela get this from? As we look at these uh, psukim that are on your screen, you'll see three psukim. The first one is the one we just learned in Malachim. And what interested us there was the fact that, uh, first of all, Evan Shlema, the fact that it was a complete, a full rock, not to be taken from pieces. That's the first thing that interest, interested us. Why? And the second thing was Barzel, the fact that it shouldn't have any metal on it, right? Barzel, learn Shma, no, no sound of metal was heard. We want to know where did this, where was the source for all of this, and is there any connection between them? So actually there is, as we'll see, not exactly, but sort of there is. Uh, two psukim found in the Torah. The first found in Shmot, Perachaf. And here it says, uh, You should make for me a Mizbeach of, of ground. This is to uh, compare it, of course, to the other Mizbech, the Mizbech HaZahav, the gold Mizbech, which was in the Heichal, and that one was used for incense. But this Mizbech is a Mizbech outside of the Heichal, and it was used, as we see right here, it was a much, much larger Mizbech, and it was used v'zavachta alav. It was used for Korbanot, et olatecha, vet shlamecha, you bring on it your burnt offerings, your shlamecha, your other Korbanot, you bring these on the Mizbech. So it's talking about the Mizbech, and in the next Pasuk, Pasuk Chavbet, it says, the Mizbach Avanim Ta'asali, and if you build, or here does not mean if, it means when you build this Mizbach of Avanim, then it says, Lo Tivne Eten, you should not build it, and here's the word that's going to very much interest us, Gazit. Gazit is what we call Yun Stone. Okay, so we have the term here of Gazit, and you should not build it of cut stone. So, Again, the word used in the Torah is gazit, and I believe the way, this is the way you spell it, yun stone, which means stone that is cut with metal. Yun stone, lotiv ne atam gazit, you're not allowed to build it with this gazit. Why not? Ki charbacha he nafta aleha, because your cherv, your sword, you have used over it, you have put on it, va techalaleha, and you have thus um, desecrated it to Chalaleha. It's a term a word we know very, very well. We use it all the time. The Sharish of Chalala is the Sharish of Chet, Lamed, and Lamed, Chalal. And Chalal means to, we use it to desecrate, but it, it really doesn't mean necessarily to desecrate. We use it really, if, if I were to try to uh, explain it, I think it's a worthwhile spending a minute or two on it. It really means to remove Kedusha, remove holiness. I use the word Kedusha here, okay? To remove Kedusha, that's when we use the word Chalal, 
okay, uh, to empty it of, of Kedusha, and therefore we use it, for example, for, you'll find the term of Chilul Shabbat, when you take the holiness out of the Shabbat, again, we use the word in English to desecrate, Chilul Hashem is used, even the term, here's one, even the term we use for a non, non-Shabbos, we say it's a day that is Chol, same word, exact same word, a day that does not have Kedusha, a uh, day of uh, of a holiday, of a Chag, of Pesach, that's not a Kadosh day, we'll call it also Chol Hamoed, okay? Chol of the Moed, the non-Kadusha day, the non-holy day of the of the Moed, of the Chag, of the holiday. Therefore, it's called Chol Hamoed. Okay, so these are used all these Vatechalaleha, so by using the Gazit, by using the Yun stone, the stone that, that's cut, so therefore we say Vatechalaleha, you have desecrated the, the, uh, the Mizbeach. So this concept of not using metal is actually said in the Torah. Kichar Bechar Nefta, not only do we have the concept, but we even have a reason for the concept because somehow using it for that purpose would be a chilul. So therefore, we have this idea of vatechalaleha. So that's number one. So the fact that, that Shlomo Melech did not want to use metal, he did not want to use barzel, which we called in the, in the Navi, and here it's the idea of gazit, of the idea of iron, using iron, is a no-no on the Mizbeach. So that, again, Shlomo Melech did not make up that concept, that is in the Torah. It, true, as we'll see maybe in a moment, the Torah is referring about the Mizbeach here, the altar, and not necessarily about the rest of the Bayit, but maybe, yeah, maybe, no, we'll have to have a look at that, but at least the first concept of not using metal, that we found in the in the Torah. And if we quickly go to, to the next uh, source in Dvarim, Perach of Zion, so we, we find the same idea also of Lo Tanif, Alehem, you should not put on them barzel, and here you find explicitly the term used barzel, exactly what it said in the Navi. So barzel here, and if we go up to the pasuk from the Navi, also the word barzel. So both of them not to use metal. So Shlomo Melech got it from the from the pasuk. Uh, again, here we have to be clear: Vanita Sham Mizbeach LaHashem Alakecha. Again, here we're referring to, as we said before the Mizbeach, and we've already pointed that out, that that's where it says you should not use Barzel, and in Shlomo he's talking about the Bayit, and they built a whole Bayit, so okay, we'll see if that makes a difference. And then Pasuk Vav, Avanim Shlemot, oh wow, here we go, and it said in the Torah that you're supposed to build it Avanim Shlemot, so this idea of Shlemot, uh, uh, it's not something that um, Shlomo made up, that we have here in the Pasuk, Evan Shlema, is actually taken from the Torah. So the same idea, Tivna, again, Tivne et Mizbach Hashem Lekecha, you should build the Mizbach of Hashem. So the, the second thing, therefore, mentioned also, this idea of having number two of Shlemot, that the uh, rocks, the stones that are used, should be stones that are Shalem, Shlemot, is nothing new, that's in the Torah, and uh, there's, the connection is what we're now looking for. Is the, are these two ideas, the fact that we have here in Sefer Dvarim Shlemot, and also not to use Barzel, interestingly enough, in, um, in, uh, in Malachim, we also, the, the Lotiv Neat and Gazit could be the same idea, that you're not allowed to use metal, therefore maybe you shouldn't cut it. So maybe the idea of not cutting it and therefore being Shalem, which we have here in, in um in Sefer Dvarim are the same. But we see clearly that Shlomo Melech's two, two things he didn't do. N- number one, not using iron is the one idea. Number two, using Shlemot. Those are things in the Torah. But as we said, the Torah talks about being on the Mizbeach. Doesn't make a difference. That's going to be the next thing we look at. So we are, here we have a Musag taken from the Yalkut Shimoni uh, Medrash, and the, the Midrash here is very, very fascinating. And the Midrash says, Lo tivne eten gazit, quoting our, the Pasuk in the Torah, the Midrash is said in the Pasuk in Shemot, you should not build again of the Yun stone, and says right away the Midrash, Bo, in it, we referring to the Mizbeach, in the Mizbeach, I ata bone gazit, you're not allowed to build of the Yun, build of the Yun stone. Aval ata bone gazit, but you can use the Yun stone, 
Bahechal, in the Hechal, Uvekoche Kochim. We talked about these last class. In the rest of the, the Beit HaMikdash, you can use Yun Stone. And so that uh, it seems, coming back to our blackboard, that yes, the fact that we said that this only refers maybe to the Mizbeach, we were not off at all. Maybe we were quite correct that it's only in the Mizbeach, that's what the, it seems to be saying. So Shlomo Melech, uh, if he refers to, if the Pasuk, we take it at face value, it's referring to the rest of the of the uh, Beit HaMikdash, that Shlomo Melech would have extended that. And he would have extended a law that was said by the Mizbeach, and he maybe extended it to make a bigger chidush, a, 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 a further idea of using it the whole Beit HaMikdash. He didn't want any iron there. And, and why not? So look what the Medrash says. We can maybe understand Shlomo here. Let's finish this off together. Beautiful, beautiful Midrash. Says kichar because you put your sword. A sword is made out of metal. And mikanahayir of Shimon ben Alaza Omer. From here, Rav Shimon ben Alaza said, "Here's the idea. Follow with me. Great. This is fantastic. Hamizbeach nivra. The mizbeach was created laharich. Laharich is to extend shenotav shel adam, the years of man, because it's made to bring karbanot and to bring sacrifices and to to attain." Uh, attain uh, uh, atonement and kapara from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so that we live long and healthy lives. Vahar Bazel, but yet metal, which you make swords and knives out of, Mikatser Yamav Shal Adam. It shortens the life of man. Therefore, Einodin, therefore it is not possible, Shiyanif HaMekatsi, you should not put that which shortens life, which is the metal, Al HaMa'arich, on the Mizbeach, which elongates life. And the Medrash continues, Rav Yochem Azakai Omer, Rav Yochem Azakai says another idea, same thing, Harehu Omer, it says, and here he talks about the second thing in the Pasuk, Avanim Shlemot Tivne, you should build, of these Avanim Shlemot, again these full Avanim, we talked about it, why? What does that mean? So look what he says, it's phenomenal, Avanim Hamatilim Shalom, Shlemot means whole, it also means peace. It, the, the rocks of the Mizbeach are, came, are, are used to, to create a, a peace Bein Yisrael le'avihem shemashamayim between us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Again, the same idea, to bring kapara and atonement, and they're, they're made to, to, to bring shalom. V'harei t'varim kavachomer, he says, isn't this most certainly so? He says, watch this. He says, ma'im avnei Mizbeach. The avanim, the rocks, the stones from these bech, she'enam lo ro'ot v'lo shamot. They do not see and they do not hear. Not only that, v'lo brought, right? And they don't speak. They're inanimate. And yet, al she'hem matilot shalom ben Yisrael la avihem shebashemayim. But since they bring peace between Yisrael and our Father in heaven, therefore, Amar Hakadosh Baruch Hu, God said, lo tanif alehem barzel. Therefore, I don't want you using metal on them. Because again, the metal kills. So you can't use it for something that's used to, to elongate life and to bring priests to the world. Says the Medrash, look at the lesson. Hamatil Shalom, a person who brings peace. Ben ish le ish to between a man and his wife. Ben ish le ish between man and his fellow man. Ben ir le ir between city and city. Ben uma le uma between one nation and another nation. Ben mishpacha le mishpacha between family and family. Ben mem shala le mem shala between nation and nation. Al achad kama vakama most certainly so. Shelo tevoh pranot most certainly no no suffering no disaster will ever come on them. So it's altogether possible that Shlomo HaMelech looked at this idea, and yes, the idea, as we mentioned before, was said about the Mizbeach. That's true. But it's very possible Shlomo HaMelech looked at this idea, and he says, wow, this is incredible. He says, you know what? I don't want metal anywhere near the Beit HaMikdash. If metal is that which shortens man's life, and this Beit HaMikdash is all about not only the Mizbeach, but the whole Beit HaMikdash should be about bringing people closer to Hashem, creating peace between God and, and B'nai Yisrael, and it's all about peace and elongating our life. I don't want metal anywhere near here. And therefore, all the, 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 the stones everywhere in the Beit HaMikdash should be shalem. It should be that which brings its whole and it brings peace. It, didn't, it wasn't a hewn stone. And, and, and the ones on the Mizbeach most certainly says the Torah commands us. And that's what Shlomo HaMelech did. And therefore, Shlomo HaMelech didn't want to have anything to do with metal instruments in his Beit HaMikdash.